here and President Mendy. Both of them are from Resurrection Parish here in Brikama. So we thank their parents, their family, their families, their relatives and friends, and parishioners for encouraging, nurturing, and supporting their vocation and formation to the priesthood. We also thank them for offering themselves in this day and age to serve the church and God's people. We know that times have changed. It's not as easy as it was before for young people to offer themselves and to respond to God's call in the priesthood or religious life. But these two have listened to the voice of the Spirit and responded to God's call in their lives in spite of everything that is happening around them. So we thank them greatly. In our second reading today, from the first letter of St. Peter, chapter 4, verses 7b to 11, we are reminded that each and every one of us have received a special grace or gift from God. And so like good stewards responsible for all these gifts of God, we should put ourselves at the service of others. And then he went on to give an example. If you are a speaker, he says, speak in words which seem to come from God. If you are a helper, you help as though every action was done at God's command. If you are also educated, if you are talented, you are rich, use your resources and abilities for the good of others. So that in the end, he said, God will be glorified through his son, Jesus Christ. So we cannot, as believers, followers of Christ Jesus, be impassive or be passive and indifferent towards others. Because each and every one of us has something to offer. We have something useful for our brothers and sisters in need. We pray this Mass to celebrate that the sacrifice and the service of Reverend Louis and Reverend Sawyer will bring glory to God. Will make God to be glorified in our own um, day and age. We pray that their ministry will enable others to come to know Christ and be saved through their own ministry and service. I welcome in our celebration today the presiding bishop of the Methodist Church here in the Gambia, Bishop Barney Ebenezer Manga. He is here with us and the bishop elect of the Anglican Diocese here in the Gambia. Bishop elect Obed Kojo Bede is also with us, and the other pastors from their churches. I also welcome the other religious leaders from other faiths. I welcome here in this celebration the government delegation, our honorable ministers who are here, and also the local authorities of West Coast region here present and all our visiting priests from the conference of Itkabek here and from Sierra Leone and also from priests in neighboring dioceses in Ziegenshore and other dioceses as well. And whoever is visiting from our side, the relatives and friends of these two candidates, we welcome you warmly and heartily in this celebration of their priestly ordination. Let us now call to mind our sins, the times we have failed, and ask for God's pardon and forgiveness.
water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit he has, we have received. Almighty, ever-living God, who will that through water, the fountain of life and the source of purification, even souls should be cleansed and receive the gift of eternal life. Be pleased, we pray, to bless this water by which we seek protection on this day, on this your day, O Lord. Renew the living spring of your grace within us and grant that by this water we may be defended from all ills of spirit and body and so approach you with hearts made clean and worthily receive your salvation. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
celebration of this Eucharist make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Gloria in excelsis
Jangan Tuhan baru aku otaria. Papier akse sizare. Cakir ukorne. Kadon jike temeri harekat. Cale urum. Modal di adune. Hamgen lahewon cayuda bip. Ditambali cagalini. Ganau pasang batis yegle batisemba. Lijem ti Yesu wa Nazaret. Mi ya lafal te selal ti pejehan muselami. Pesal ko at katanam. Pamudon diar. Dan na defal nyubari luba. Te weral nyepa nya seitane dugon. Ndeke yala andon nak mong. Nyo nak mi di apotar. Sede nan lepa lo modekom chareu yaurya ak chareu zala Rai nan yuko chako banta ban yuko weke wom wa yalla de kali nako chanete lu fangwa me nako katan di mu fenyo mbolo mabit wa sede ya yalla tanon bu yaga nyomrek Nyun la tanon. Nyun nyidon leka tenan ak mong. Ganao bamudeke chanyudena. Mong yu santa nyiga mbolo mi. Te sedene. Mong la yala tana. Mu ate nyalidunda ak nyade. Mong la yunindia yip sedene. Kepa kugomchi mong. Dinajot mbale bakaram. Chitura. Batum yala. Receive a gift 
employ it on another, as those stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who utters oracles of God, whoever renders service as one who renders it by the strength which God supplies, in all of that, in everything, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To Him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fear or the which comes upon you to prove you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you see Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. The word of the Lord. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and prayed, saying, Holy Father, I revealed your name to those whom you gave me out of the world. They belong to you, and you gave them to me, and they kept your word. I gave them your word, and the world hated them, because they did not belong to the world, any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world but that you keep them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in truth. Your truth, your word is your truth. As you sent me into the world, so I send them into the world. And I consecrate myself for them, so that they also may be consecrated in truth. Evangelii Domini
come forward. Reverend Soyam Boke. Present. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, for service as priests. Do you judge them to be worthy? After inquiry among the people of Christ, and upon the recommendation of those concerned with their training, I testify that they have been found worthy. We rely on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ. And we choose these men, our brothers, for priesthood in the Presbyteral Order. Thanks be to God. You have just witnessed a very important part of our celebration of the priestly ordination of our two brothers. That's the calling of the candidates. Both of them were called from their families and they responded. They responded loud and clear to indicate that they are present and they are freely and also willingly presenting themselves and offering themselves to God's call. So we thank them for making that bold step, for presenting themselves for service in the Catholic Church. One of our priests in the seminary was appointed the bishop of a new diocese after he was transferred and sent on mission to another country. He returned home to his country and then came back to the seminary as, as is usually the case, to prepare himself for his consecration and installation as the bishop of the new diocese. The seminary staff and we, the students, were obviously happy for him. We welcomed him back and we took turns to meet him in his room and congratulate him for his appointment to this important office as the bishop of a new diocese. Now he was a very interesting, jovial and sometimes funny person. He can, you know, make statements that sometimes can confuse you or just maybe make fun. And everybody liked him for that. Now when we went to see him, he took some of us by surprise. We congratulated him and then he told us we should be sympathizing with him instead of congratulating him. Now, 
it was a very strange comment and it took us by surprise and we thought he was joking but he was serious. And we were confused as ordinary students in philosophy, we didn't know what to say. Eventually we told him, well, we think it's just proper to congratulate you because the Holy Father appointed you to the Episcopal Order in the Church. It's a very, um, of course, like noble and worthy ministry and office. He agreed with us and then he said, but you have no idea of the demands, the responsibilities and the obligations that I'll now have to endure or experience as Bishop of a Diocese. Now, at that point, we didn't understand his statement and his concerns. But his words later on made sense to us as we progressed in our formation and eventually became priests. We realized that in any office, in any ministry or vocation in the church, the demands, the responsibilities, the obligations, the challenges are enormous. They are huge. And sometimes, you know, they can be overwhelming. But at the same time also we realize that you cannot, for that reason, despair or be disappointed because of the challenges that you experience in your ministry, because of the daunting task of your vocation as a religious, a priest, or a bishop. Now, our two brothers, Reverend Soyamboke and Reverend Louis, will soon be ordained priests of the Diocese of Banjul. So, before we go any further, I would want to ask them whether we should congratulate them, or sympathize with them, or both. We want to be sure of your feelings and your sentiments for this new life and vocation that you are accepting today. I don't want to take the risk of congratulating you. And then tomorrow when you experience some challenges and difficulties, some frustrations, you question why we congratulated you on this big day. Or should I sympathize with you? I can also do that. In some ordinations, you know, you have crowds of people and family members coming to bid farewell. And they shed tears. They hug you and cry. Which is a sign that, you know, they are obviously maybe not too happy. Or they are going to miss you. Now, that is also a possibility, but then if I sympathize with you and tomorrow you enjoy this life, you don't see any problem, you'll be wondering, why is it that they train you for seven years for something so simple that you can do without any stress, as they say? Because sometimes people have a very false and distorted idea of the priesthood as a very easygoing, enjoyable, comfortable life. And then you wonder why you were told, or well, you had to be instructed and go through all this rigorous formation and training to consider the Catholic priesthood as a life of self-sacrifice, um, discipline, and total dedication to God. Now what you experience and what you discover and admire when you are ordained a priest, can affect you in a negative or positive way. It can affect your understanding and conviction about priestly ministry, about vocation to the priesthood. And sometimes that creates a problem. It is often the cause of the crisis of vocation and also the conflict of interest among priests, especially newly ordained priests. When your high expectations and hopes are not realized. And when your condition or state of life or your experience contradicts your initial notion of the priesthood. It happens, but how do you deal with it is the important thing. So I want to try and explain and also to impress on you or to submit to you that priesthood is a life of selfless sacrifice. 
It is a life of service in the church. This will enable you and the lay faithful who are here present to fully understand the true nature and also the ministry of Catholic priesthood. It will also prepare you and help you to be ready for the challenges and also the obligations and the difficulties that you may experience in the course of your ministry in the years to come. Now the life and ministry of Jesus himself, who called you and invited you to share in his priesthood, was wholly and solely a life of self-sacrifice and service to God's people, regardless of their background, their race, their gender, their age, their status, their condition in life. He clearly said in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 20, verse 28, that he did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Now that statement clearly defined the life and ministry of Jesus as the Son of God, sent by God himself to reconcile humanity with God and to grant us eternal life. The writer of the letter to the Hebrews tells us in chapter 10, verse 5 to 10, that when Jesus was sent into the world, his response to the Father was, you do not want the sacrifice of animals and bulls, but you prepare the body for me. So here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. And so Jesus was then free to go about preaching the good news of the, God, uh, of the, of the kingdom of God, Doing good to all, healing the sick, and responding to the needs of the poor, the lonely, and the outcasts in the society. He also invited his followers, his disciples, to share in his life, his life of sacrifice and service to God's people. When he sent them out in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 8 to 11, he instructed them to go and preach to him and also to give without charge. He said, you receive without charge, give without charge. And so he told them, do not take with you gold, silver, or extra belongings, because the laborer, he said, deserves his wage. So the followers of Jesus also lived a life of service and sacrifice. They went about doing good, preaching the gospel, healing the sick. And St. Paul confessed in the first letter of Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 22 to 23, that he made himself weak with the weak. He also made himself poor with the poor. And he made himself all things for all people, he said, so that he will win some and also save them and share in the benefits of the gospel of Christ Jesus. So this was basically the life Jesus lived and also invited his followers to live. And that is the life that Reverend Sawyer and Reverend Louis will live. So the faithful take note. Do not expect much from them in terms of material help. They don't have gold, they don't have silver. They don't have extra belongings for them. To begin with, much more for you. So they are called to serve, to follow Christ Jesus who was poor for our sake, in order to enrich us. So the priests in the Catholic Church, what they do is they offer their lives at the service of others. Your vocation as a priest is to offer your life, your, your life totally at the service of others. In the teachings of the church, in the tradition of the church, in the laws of the church and the practice of the church. Your vocation as a priest is a call to service in the mystical body of Christ, the church. You are called and chosen today among all people in order to dedicate your life at the service of the church and God's people. For the rest of your life, not just for a few years or for what? While you are young for the rest of your life. You are called to dedicate yourself, your time, your life, 
your personal ambition, your right to family, and also to riches for the sake of Christ and the salvation of God's people. So your vocation is a call to service. That is basically what you are required to do for the rest of your life. It is a lifelong commitment to service. And that makes it different from other vocations, from other services, and other occupational contracts that you sometimes enter into as lay faithful. But for the priest, he is a priest forever. He is a priest for life, for the rest of his life. Even if God forbid tomorrow, he decides to abscond or abandon the priesthood, he still remains a priest. Because of the indelible mark that is going to be imprinted on your soul today. Today you will be ordained a priest, you will be anointed by the power of the Spirit. And you will be configured in the image of Christ Jesus for the rest of your life. Christ is the high priest who has invited us to share in his priesthood. And when you are ordained, you are ordained as another Christ who acts in the person of Christ Jesus. Today, you will be ordained to serve the church and God's people as another Christ. So your first task, according to Vatican II, in Presbyterorum Ordinis number 4, he says your first task as a priest, as another Christ, is to preach the gospel. That is your obligation. Share the truth of the gospel with others through your exemplary behavior, through your preaching and teaching, in order to bring about holiness and compassion among God's people. In that same decree, also number five, it says you are required to build up the body of Christ Jesus, to enable the members of the church to acquire a mature faith. That is important and also to respond to their needs and to lead those who are astray back to the fold. Now, as a priest, you are called to offer your lives at the service of all God's people, but the poor, the weak, the lonely, the aged should be dear to you or to us. Why? Because Jesus identified himself with the humble and the poor. He came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life for all. Among the all, those who are dear to Jesus are the poor, the lonely, those who are weak. So you cannot in your priestly ministry just concentrate on the rich and the great and ignore the poor, the little ones, those who are lonely in our society. You must pay at special attention to them. Now, in our first reading today, from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verses 37 to 43, St. Peter willingly proclaimed the good news. He also preached about the baptism of Christ Jesus, his mission and his resurrection to Cornelius and his household. He testified that it was God who anointed Jesus with the Spirit at his baptism, empowered him to go about preaching the good news of the kingdom of God, doing good, healing the sick, and also responding to the needs of all. And then he also said that it was God who raised him from the dead on the third day, after he was crucified on the cross by the Jewish authorities. And his household were required to believe in God. And in his son Jesus Christ, he rose from the dead. In this passage, St. Peter rightly identified himself as a witness a witness who was commanded by Jesus himself to preach and to bear witness to the resurrection of Christ Jesus. 
So he was a credible witness and he also bore witness with his eyes to the miracles that Christ Jesus himself walked. And so Cornelius and his household should believe Peter's testimony. He said he was commanded by Christ Jesus to preach to all that whoever believes in him will be saved through his name. Now as a priest or as priests ordained and also called to service in the church, you are commanded and authorized by God himself to be effective in your ministry of evangelization. The church also requires you to be a witness to Christ Jesus, to share his love with all people, to let everyone experience the goodness, the mercy, the love and compassion of God. And that you are required to preach with confidence, without fear or favor. You are authorized by God himself by virtue of your vocation as a priest. The church itself approves. So you should be effective in your ministry of evangelization. In proclaiming the gospel of Christ Jesus to all people. This is something you should be ready to do for the rest of your life. In our gospel reading today from the gospel of John. Chapter 17, verses 6, 14 to 19, Jesus clearly expressed his intention for his disciples to continue his mission here on earth. He anticipated the time when he will die, when he will no longer be with them. And so he prayed for them and commanded or commended them to his heavenly Father. And that was the whole of chapter 17. That was his priestly prayer for his disciples. And part of that priestly prayer is what we had in today's gospel reading. He said towards the end, As you have sent me to the world, so too I send them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself so that they too will be consecrated in the truth. So Jesus sent his disciples to the world just as he was sent to the world by his heavenly father so that they can continue his mission of proclaiming the gospel, of sharing the love and mercy of God to all people. The same world he was sent was where he sent his disciples with the same purpose. So he shared his mission with them. And as he was consecrated or set apart for the mission, so also he prayed for his disciples to be set apart to be consecrated. That's what it means. You are set apart solely for the mission of Christ and the mission of the church. And it is that same mission, Reverend Sawyer and Reverend Lou, you are called to participate in and to contribute towards its fulfillment. The church and the diocese has done its part by preparing you and training you all these years for this mission that is ongoing. Yes, it is not the same as the time of Christ or the time of the missionaries we are succeeding. But today is still mission in the church. Mission intra and mission extra. Wherever the good news needs to be proclaimed, you will be sent to proclaim that good news. This is the mission that is entrusted to you. And you have to dispose yourself now you have to prove yourself to show that you are capable, you are worthy, and you are also a faithful and obedient servant of Christ and priest of the church. So we have all confidence that you are capable for the task. The mission is challenging, it can be daunting, but if you cooperate with the Spirit, if you open or dispose yourself to God's will, you will succeed. You will prevail and overcome all the difficulties, the challenges that you experience. In today's gospel reading, Jesus repeatedly mentioned the world so many times. He said, 
The world hated his disciples because they do not belong to the world. And then he repeated it again. He said, they are not of the world no more than I am of the world. And then he also said, as you send me into the world, so true I am sending them into the world. So within that um, short passage, he used the world or mentioned the world almost seven times. And that has generated questions about the meaning of the world. What did Jesus really mean? And what is the relationship between his disciples and the world? Some have suggested that the use of the world or the, the reference to the world in this passage is like a very negative notion or understanding of the world. But that is obviously not true because Jesus prayed for his disciples not to be removed from the world. And he also sent his disciples into the world. And so the world that Jesus had in mind is not the world of humanity, the world of nature, our world. The world here refers to the world of sin and evil, the world of darkness and error, the world of unbelief, denial and betrayal. These are the worlds Jesus prayed his heavenly father to deliver his disciples. He said, I do not ask you to remove them from the world, but save them from the evil one. The evil one is in the world, and the evil one disguises itself in different ways. Now you are ordained priest, or you'll be ordained priest today, and sent out into the world to minister to God's people. But your ministry in the world or to God's people should not conform to the ways of the world. You are required to be prudent. You are required to discern and know God's will in your ministry in the world. Just make sure that you are not under the evil one. That you do not conform to the ways of the world in the process of your priestly ministry. We pray in this Mass, we celebrate that your priestly ministry and service in the church will be fulfilling, will be successful, will be dynamic, and it will also be delightful for you. And we pray that you will never ever regret this day when you decided to offer yourselves totally at the service of God and his people, to live this life of sacrifice and service in the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. My sons, before you proceed to the order of the presbyterate, declare before the people your intention to undertake this priestly office. Are you resolved with the help of the Holy Spirit to discharge without fail the office of priesthood in the presbyteral order as conscientious fellow workers with the bishops in caring for the Lord's flock? Are you resolved to celebrate the mysteries of Christ faithfully and religiously as the church has handed them down to us for the glory of God and the sanctification of Christ's people?
Are you resolved to exercise the ministry of the word, wordily and wisely, preaching the gospel and explaining the Catholic faith? Are you resolved to consecrate your life to God for the salvation of his people and to unite yourselves more closely every day to Christ the High Priest who offered himself for us to the Father as the perfect sacrifice? I am with the help of God. <laughs> Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God who has begun the good work in you bring it to fulfillment. respect and obedience to me and my successors. I do. May God who has begun the good work in you bring it to fulfillment. Let us be upstanding. My dear people, let us pray that the all-powerful Father may pour out the gift of heaven on these servants of his whom he has chosen to be priests.
Lord our God, and pour out upon these servants of yours the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the grace and power of the priesthood. In your sight, we offer these men for ordination. Support them with your unfailing love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty God, you are the source of every honor and dignity of all progress and stability. You watch over the growing family of man by your gift of wisdom and your pattern of order. When you had appointed high priest people, you chose other men next to them in rank and dignity to be with them and to help them in their task. And so there grew up the ranks of priests and other offices of Levites established by sacred rites. In the desert, you extended the spirit of Moses to 70 wise men who helped him to rule the great company of his people. You shared among the sons of Israel the fullness of their father's power to provide worthy priests in sufficient number for the increasing rites of sacrifice and worship. With the same living care, you gave companions to your son's apostles to help in teaching the faith. They preached the gospel to the whole world. Lord, grant also to us such fellow workers, for we are weak and our need is greater. Almighty Father, grant to these servants of yours the dignity of the priesthood. Renew within them the spirit of holiness. As co-workers with the order of bishops, may they be faithful to the ministry that they receive from you, Lord God, and be to others a model of right conduct. May they be faithful in working with the order of bishops so that the words of the gospel may reach the ends of the earth and the family of nations made one in Christ may become God's one holy people. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, may Jesus preserve you to sanctify the Christian people and to offer sacrifice to God.
The Father anointed our Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. May Jesus preserve you to sanctify the Christian people and to offer sacrifice to God. Amen. Accept from the holy people of God the gifts to be offered to him. Know what you are doing. Imitate the mystery you celebrate. Model your life on the mystery of the Lord's cross. Accept from the holy people of God the gifts to be offered to him. Know what you are doing and imitate the mystery you celebrate. Model your lives on the mystery of the Lord's cross. Amen. Be careful.
and serve your people. Grant by the power of this sacrifice, we pray, that the labors of your servants may constantly please you, and in your church bear that fruit which lasts forever. Grant this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the New and Eternal Covenant. And by your wondrous design, we are pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption to set before your children the Paschal Banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with your word, and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be, to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis our Pope, myself, Bishop Gabriel, and all those who hold in to the truth, hand on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you 
for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise. Oh, they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and our Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clemens, Sictus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your sins. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which you make, which we make to you, also for these your servants, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of priesthood, and in your mercy keep safe your gifts in them so that what they have received by divine commission, they may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we your servants and your holy people offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us 
this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with the serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you almighty God, command that these gifts be, brought, be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, and who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who do sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexandra, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Salutaribus moniti, a divine institution in formati, how demus de cere. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace on this day of joy. the high priest of our faith who has invited us to share in his priesthood. Behold the Lamb of God who laid down his life on the cross for our salvation. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priests and to all your servants, that united to you in unfailing love, they may receive the grace of giving worthy service to your majesty. Grand is through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Good afternoon to you all. Father, um, uh, I would like uh, the choir to help me sing this song, Besubane Angini. All right? Besubane Angini. Besubane Bishop, Most Reverend Dr. Gabriel Mendy, CSSP, Very Reverend Father Antony Sonko, Vicar General of the Diocese of Banjul, my esteemed formators, priests and religious, Reverend Sisters, beloved seminarians, our dear parents, relatives, and dignitaries. I can see a high delegate dignitary seated over there, led by the First Lady and, uh, and uh, the ministers all seated there. I acknowledge you. Um, uh, um, pastors from the members of other Christian churches, brothers and sisters in Christ, a very good afternoon to you all. Son and Holy Spirit, and the honor to his blessed mother for the wonderful gift of the priesthood with which we have been bestowed. I stand before you on behalf of my brother, Reverend Father Louis Mendy, to express our collective sentiments on this great day that marks the beginning of a vocation modeled on Christ the High Priest, a vocation of love, filled with love, and made with love, because the author himself is love. Our vocation began in the heart of God, but our responses were nourished by you, our family, of course, our bishop, priests, and religious, and all of you gathered here. If gratitude, they say, is memory stored in the heart. I would like to make a recent reminiscence in which I intend to associate our joy to all of those that walk the history road with us. To God, our gratitude for you is immense that we cannot express it in words. This is why tomorrow, we shall offer you in the Mass. We shall celebrate the first fruits of what we have now become. To you, our Lord Bishop, Most Reverend Dr. Gabriel Mendy, CSSP, we thank you for your fatherly love. St. Augustine once said to his priest in a crazy Mass, For you I am a bishop, but with you I am a priest. This re really reflects the relationship you build with us and by accepting our request to be your collaborators, you have manifested the love you have for your diocese and the pastoral concern you have for a diocese with a small number of priests. May God continue to give you the spirit of courage and right judgment, a spirit of knowledge and of love. To you, our priests of the diocese, formators, both past and present, and all the formators in different formation houses, we are, we are indebted to you. Alexandra the Great will say, I am indebted to my father for living, but to my teacher for living well. Therefore, 
We are indebted to you for living well. We pray that the holy love of God surround you and seal you from the world's contagion and may he always bless the fruit of your labor. To our priests and religious coming from afar, those coming from Senegal, those coming from Sierra Leone, your presence here is a reflex of the bond, the love and the fraternity we share in Christ Jesus. Having left your busy schedules to come and join us grace this memorable occasion is indeed a gift we will never forget. I pray that God will continue to strengthen the bond and as you return to your various destinations, may he take you safe and reunite you with the people of God entrusted to your pastoral care. To the Reverend Sisters, you have always been close collaborators and have had great influence in the vocation of many priests. I will say keep it up and may God bless and keep you for the various services he called you to render in his vineyard. Wisdom has it that parents play a pivotal role in the lives of their children. They are strong pillars of support, guidance, and love. In view of this, I pray you all to observe a minute of silence in honor of the father of Reverend Father Louis. Papa, we believe that you are spiritually sharing this joy with us in heaven. Continue to rest in peace at Jesus' feet. Amen. To our parents present here, you see them beautifully seated. Can you stand? Let's give you a round of applause. Good. All right, sit down. On the table. My mercy. Beautiful. Maybe your wishes and aspirations were for us to become uh, presidents <laughs> or doctors or ministers or whatever. Notwithstanding, uh, when our intentions were declared to you, your reactions and support were encouraging. Thank you for accepting God's project in us. May God bless you in us and through us. I use this Irish blessing to bless you. May you live as long as you want and never want as long as you live. The letter to the Hebrews tells us in Hebrew chapter 5 verse 1 that every high priest is chosen from among the people and is anointed to represent the people in matters relating or related to God to our Paris family the resurrection family are you here your prayers and support didn't go in vain our Paris priests the past and uh, present, Father James Mendy and his assistant Father Matthias, we cannot pay you for the support you rendered us both moral and spiritual throughout our seminary formation. We want to say thank you. May God bless and reward you all the days of your life. We also stand grateful to the various parishes and communities that we worked in throughout our seminary formation, especially those we are presently working in. The Cathedral family, are you here? Where is the St. Peter's family, are you here? I will reserve my comment. <laughs> Your hospitality is remarkable as far as our diaconate ministry is concerned. May God increase your faith and build in you more love of him. 
to our host and retreat preacher. I wish I can say this in French, but all the same, it will be related to him. Per Paul Bakari Mane and his Sindon community, I must confess that the serenity and decency, not to talk of the delicious meals we were served with, all that help us naturally to pray and uh, be spirit-filled all day in preparation for this memorable occasion. Father, thank you for giving us the avenue to be spiritually and physically prepared. Thank you for the kind and assuring works in the retreat. God bless and reward your hospitality. Amen. Amen. To our junior brothers, those in the seminary, and uh, those uh, on pastorals, John Jai and uh, Ben. I encourage you to keep up the good fight. Chronics, the Jamaican musician, uh, in one of his songs, will say, even if the going gets tough, let the tough get going. For the fish will never opt for the dry land, even when the waters are tumbling. So brothers, today I tell you, Continue to pray, study, exercise patience, be careful, and trust in God. I pray that God who has begun this good work in you will bring it to fulfillment. Amen. To the choir of the day, JP2 choir, I must confess that the echoes of your melodious voices led us to see the glory of God as we feel as we are filled with the spirit filled with joy and even want to become choristers isn't it <laughs> all because of your beautiful songs i tell you your reward is times two for saint augustine says he who sings well praise beautiful we thank you for the time and sacrifice you put in to make sure that you offer your voices in praise and supplication to God in the Mass. Keep it up, and may God richly reward you. Amen. To our benefactors and benefactresses, who told you that your financial, your moral and spiritual support will go in vain? No, I tell you, your reward will be greater in heaven. Today we are here because you stood by us and supported us immensely. Start receiving your blessing. Like the prophet Elijah in the first Kings chapter 17 verse 7 to 16 prayed for the widow of Zarephath. So we pray for you that your jars of oil will never run dry. And may God replenish you a hundredfold. And know this. Anyone who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will solely receive a prophetic reward. To the ordination committee, can you please give them a round of applause? God bless you for the sleepless nights and the resources you have put into the success of this day. May each of them be a blessing for you. Thank you and be assured of our daily prayers. The vocation committee, our wonderful companions on the journey, we love you and will always pray for you. May God who has seen everything you have done in secret bless you abundantly. To the media houses here present, Thank you for relating this solemn and memorable occasion to our families, friends, and well-wishers who, due to circumstances beyond their control, could not make it here. Your thoughtfulness is a gift we will never forget. May God, who sees all that you do here in relating the gospel to the people of God, reward you abundantly. Amen. To all of you, dignitaries, I can see them seated at my far right, who left your busy schedules to grace this occasion. We thank and appreciate you. May God bless you all and see you all back safely home and be reunited with your families. To the pastors of members of other Christian churches, 
Your thoughtfulness to come and grace this occasion is indeed a gift for us. We want to thank you immensely and pray that the good Lord who has called you into this way of life will continue to renew the grace of ordination in you and continue to bless you and keep your flock all safe so that we all enjoy the fruit of that labor on that final day. Thank you. God is the sole security of us who for being here safe and sound so far. Notwithstanding, we want to recognize the presence of our security personnel who are here to maintain peace and orderliness and to keep us safe from any form of aggression. We thank you and pray for you that God will see you through as you render faithful service to our beloved nation, the Gambia. I wouldn't do justice if I failed to thank the women and all those helping in the kitchen with item 13, which we will use to nourish ourselves physically after being spiritually nourished. Your sacrifice would not go unrewarded. May God bless you and grant your heart's desires. On a final note, giving out public speeches are not always easy. And so, if in any way I have left you out in this boat of things, please, I don't intend to. Excuse me for that. Once again, thank you all for your kind attention, and may God bless you all. Amen.
Thank you very much, Jerel and Jeff. Jerel and Jeff, Mamboki, Manjago, and Valentine. Lady, the newly ordained will pray for the bishop. My dear brothers and sisters, we've almost come to the conclusion of today's ceremony, the liturgical celebration in which two of our brothers have now been raised to the order of the Presbytery. This is just an information that immediately after the Mass, all invited guests Dignitaries are welcome to the reception to be held at the primary school just next door. That is the basic cycle. However, the rest are ordered to stay here because food will be served to all. Nyom le nyu invite, borom dom watang kayi wajuri nyinga kinga nyinga ham le nyom le nyu falte labe labe i aksori dina nyu dem ki primary or basic cycle school bi fufu nany fa am nyom se ni ani nyun nichi des nany top fi chibir nasi school bi fi. Te dina nyu savit sunyu ang nyu sunyu ang neng ko jele fi nyu nyu jele sen ang ke basic cycle school bi jere lenje. Before the final blessing. people here present. I will not rehearse the whole thing again. I want to begin first of all to acknowledge the presence of the government delegation led by the First Lady, Madam Patumata Barbaro here present. She is here representing His Excellency President Adam Abaro. So our president is here present as well. Also the government minister who are here in her company and the local authorities of this region. I want to thank you sincerely for um, honoring our invitation, our invitation and also making yourself present here in person. 
I want to acknowledge the gift that you have presented to I thank also my brother bishops who are here present representing their various churches. Thank you for making it. Today, Saturday is a busy day, but thank you for coming. I want to thank in a special way the ordination committee led by the able Joseph Mende. Please give them a round of applause. The planning started many months ago, and that's why you see the place well organized and everything is successful. May God bless and reward you and the different groups, the joint choir, um, the different organizations, um, the logistics, the ushers, and every other person who made this day a success. Thank you a lot. Thank you also to the different media houses here present. I will not name you individually. You know yourselves. Thank you for creating this um, time to relay this historical event or celebration of the ordination of our two deacons. May God bless you for your sacrifice and also your contribution towards the spread of the gospel. And then thanks to the visiting priests who came from Sierra Leone near, nearby diocese here and also the religious. I suppose you have a lot of female religious visiting as well. I wish you a very joyful, happy and memorable um, evening or celebration and congratulations once again to our newly ordained priests of the Diocese of Banjul. you are automatically incarnated into the Diocese of Banjo and its clergy with all the rights and privileges here on the patch. As they say, so thank you very much. You are one of us now and we pray that you will offer your service to this diocese. I know your ordination will be a source of encouragement for more vocations. We still need more. As you ordain priests, they are assigned in different ways. And you may say, oh, we only have a few parishes, we don't need more priests and so forth. You will always need priests. So your families and parishes encourage your children. Not just expect other people's children to become priests. And then you go about doing your own thing somewhere and expect them to be at your service. Encourage your girls, your boys to discern and to respond to God's will. So thank you and please rise for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God who founded the church and guides her still protect you constantly with his grace that you may faithfully discharge the duties of the priesthood. Amen. May he make you servants and witnesses in the world to divine charity and truth, faithful ministers of reconciliation. Amen. And may God make you true shepherds to provide the living bread and word of life to the faithful, that they may continue to grow in the unity of the body of Christ. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you now and forever. Go forth glorifying God by your lives.